Uh, welcome to another episode of Walnut Women. And um, today we are going to discuss the general topic about mom guilt. So first of all, uh, let's just talk about what it is and where it comes from. The guilt that moms experience maybe on a daily basis. You know, when Leslie first uh, brought up this topic, I told her, I said, this is my favorite topic because I feel so much guilt. <laughs> and I've been a mom for a long time, still a mother, even with adult children. And even recently, I would feel guilty about something that I made a, maybe should have done with my adult children. Mm -hmm. Or thinking back to what it was when they were children, I said, oh, man, I, I really messed up there. I still feel guilty about past mm. as well as current <laughs> so i said I, I reflect on this topic a lot yeah uh well i wanted to start off by just saying that i i know a lot of moms who are um not believers and you know a, a lot of common positive uh themes sometimes i hear them say is things like you got this or you're strong, you can do it, you're enough. And it, I think that sometimes it can, um, for the believer, really point us to false truths about ourselves because uh, at the end of the day, I truly believe that we don't have this. Um, mm -hmm. We truly are inadequate as moms without God. And I think that's the first important truth that I'm learning how to grasp as I realize why um, when I am weak and I fall short to do my job well or to love my kids perfectly, obviously I am imperfect, but I just wanted to throw it out there that like, I, I don't got this and I would rather hear that than to see a message mm -hmm. telling me that I can do this because I know without mm -hmm. Christ, I can do nothing and I won't be able to raise my kids in the way yeah. that I'm called to. I mean, when you see that message, doesn't it almost even like feed into your mom guilt? Like, oh, how come all these other women got this, but I don't got it sort of thing, right? And you start questioning like, <coughs> like, oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> like what's wrong with me sort of thing? Like, why do I need help? Or why do I feel inadequate? Or why am I struggling? Yeah. I mean, I, it's just the way I think that moms try to encourage each other. And I think mm -hmm. the most helpful, useful encouragement has to be truthful. And mm -hmm. I think for us, like we do have a different um, guide to really point us to our role as mothers. Um, I think, uh, first of all, that whole comparison thing, I think moms are the worst at comparing themselves with other moms, social media definitely doesn't help. And then even comparing their own kids to other people's kids and their own kids with each other. Yeah. And yeah. That, that, that struggle of comparison is real and it's tempting and it, it makes us not focus on, I think, the goal that we should be fixing our focus on. Yeah, it's so true because when Katie talked about how you feel we feel guilty regardless how old our kids are you know like Katie has grown children adult children and I have one those at home and and uh, amazing things that you know when we have this conversation and all of a sudden they told me oh mom you know remember you did this when we're at this age I'm like wait I didn't do that they say yes you did you know you make us feel like we're just like so like you know insufficient we had a great we're not good at all. I'm like, wait, what did that happen? And they would tell me exactly what happened. I was like, oh, it did happen. I'm so sorry. And then, and then like, you took him off. You know, we learned to deal with it. <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah, so I just, again, um, like Katie said, I think that a lot of times that um, for me, I feel guilty when, um, in the, the place where I didn't even realize I, I, I did harm to them, you know, in mm -hmm. some way um but i'm just grateful that god is gracious and god used those opportunities to make me understand that even i fall short you know my kids are still in his hands and they still realize that yeah uh, their god our god is good you know mm -hmm. so i just i'm grateful for that so 
I thought mom girl thing is uh, yeah, Katie's right. If if he cares with us every single day, and and yeah, we have to really re rely on God's grace and knowing that. And like let's like you said, we're not we're just not good at this, and it's okay. We're not good at this. We have to admit that, hmm. and then to learn from the you know the the role model. You know, I think maybe Christ. moms are more yeah. prone to um, guilt, maybe, um, because I think we want our children to do well, mm -hmm. and um, and and that reflects upon us, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, your kids are so good, and then I feel like, oh yeah, I'm, mm -hmm. I, I I did pretty well as a mom, and if I don't if I don't get the the, the uh, accolades for my kids i feel like well, maybe i didn't do enough i feel a failure because they mm. that reflects upon us mm -hmm. and um as i thought about that you know when i feel guilty i think it's really my pride you mm. know that i want my kids to do well i feel guilty if i don't but then in the end it's because there's a sense of like i, I want to be i want to be good a great mom not just a good mom <laughs> would be a great mom mm -hmm. and that's kind of like a, you ever feel that like it's like your pride that yeah. makes you feel yeah. guilty yeah course. yeah it's it's almost like you don't give yourself grace to be mm -hmm. imperfect yeah. like you think you have to do it all and it's up to you everything about raising those kids depends mm -hmm. on your efforts Mm -hmm. And that's like a wrong message that we're even sending to our own kids, like yeah. giving mm -hmm. them the impression that we're perfect. And I, I do think like it does stem from pride, yeah. pride in wanting to be the best and pride of self-sufficiency that like we can do this because mm -hmm. we're strong enough or that we're good mm -hmm. enough. But I mean, that's also like, like a false message because mm -hmm. only mm -hmm. Christ can really enable us to grow as mothers and when we fail or um, those moments when we sin against our kids and we did wrong them I think yeah. we need to send that message you know of God's grace that that you know our kids would extend forgiveness to us if we mm -hmm. you know humbly ask for forgiveness yeah. so yeah definitely pride mm -hmm. One of the things about asking your kids for forgiveness too is to ask God for forgiveness first. first. Yeah, it's um, mm -hmm. if it's uh, something that we truly have sinned, getting angry or yelling, mm -hmm. which I think all moms kind <laughs> of have those moments. Um, mm -hmm. To not just confess to your kids, but confess to God, we sinned against God. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then then the gospel is beautiful. You know, because it's no. not just guilt mm -hmm. as a mom. I have guilt about, I have sinned about, I have a lot of other sins besides sins mm -hmm. of a mom. And that the gospel and the blood of Christ cleanses all of them. Yeah. Not just these other ones, but the right. mom ones that mm -hmm. we feel to be like, I'm justified to feel guilty as a mom. Mm -hmm. And I kind of dwell on that more because I, I should do better for my kids or uh, you know, whatever it is, and we feel somehow that that's not covered the blood of Christ, maybe. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, for me personally, I'll ask you guys a little later what you guys feel guilty about, but I think some of the things I actually feel the most guilty about is when I reach a point <laughs> where my emotions explode through forms of anger and impatience or irritability. And then there's like an explosive moment of yelling. And um, I feel guilty about that because I know that in my heart, I want to love my kids. And it exposes the fact that I have limits and I re not only reached my limit, but I surpassed it. And then my whole sin yeah. struggle has come upon them. And it, it makes me feel guilty. I even afterwards, I'll tell Darren, like, I can't believe I reach such an ugly part or the kids see like the ugliest sides of me, even mm. sides that don't come out with anyone else. But it is like this unique relationship where they, they push, they, they push my limits and then I can't handle it. And then I just explode on them. And um, I think it's been so humbling the first few times 
when I had to learn how to tell them <laughs> that I struggle, mm. I get angry and I'm weak and I really need God's help. Mm -hmm. And I think in those moments, it's kind of teaching them right then and there that I am imperfect. Mm -hmm. And I have to admit that right. to them, like I, I, can't, mm -hmm. I am imperfect. And then in those moments, you know, I ask for forgiveness. I ask, yeah. um, mm -hmm. I, you know, tell God as well. And I pray and they pray with me. And I remember one time, um, one of the first few things that really exploded was when we would try to get to BSF on time. It, mm. I think it was like nine o'clock Wednesday morning. And that time would be such a struggle because it was the first time I was trying to get our kids out on time by myself. And there was always a reason we were running late and I would get so upset because I was like, this is the one thing I want to do. And it's like for my good. And then we were always late because something was going wrong. And then um, I think when my oldest was maybe four, she just I would tell her, you know, I'm angry again. And she just told me, oh, why don't you just pray? Well, we just pray in the car uh, so I can help you. And I just really, I, I experienced God's grace mm -hmm. with my kids when they like free me from those yeah. standards that I have to be a perfect mom in there, praying mm -hmm. alongside me. And I think it was, I don't know. I always cry when my kids extend that kind mm. of to me for um, not being perfect yeah. for them. Mm -hmm. And um, it is really humbling because like, again, this relationship is I'm their mom. So there's this maybe prideful expectation that I need to be perfect for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or there's yeah. that temptation. Even though yeah. I can confess I'm an imperfect sinner or I'm a sinner, you know. Yeah, that's so sweet, Leslie, because that reminds me when I used to homeschool my boys at home. And yeah, there was a few times like, you know, they would find me lock myself in bathroom, you know, and because I just couldn't take it anymore. You know, I was teaching them and thinking that like Katie said earlier, you know, I am Mrs. Chin. I'm a teacher. I'm trying to teach a teacher. I couldn't teach my own kids. You know, this is a simple math concept. They just wouldn't get it. Okay, so I was just like getting really upset. And now I think about it, it's like, I don't think I was upset at them not getting it. I'm just upset mm. at myself. Like, mm. how come I cannot get this through their heads, you know, their mm. minds? So I would lock myself in the bathroom. At first I would scream and yell, say, why don't you get it? And then like, you know, after a couple of times and I realized that that doesn't help. So I just lock myself in the bathroom and start crying. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, then, and they'll come to the bathroom and knock on the door. Mom, are you okay? I was like, yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. Just keep a couple of minutes. I'll be right out soon. They're like, I think we figured this question. Oh, mom, I think I got this one. I said, you yeah, did. <laughs> yeah, so it's just, again, like I said, it's like, it's all by God's grace. And then um, when we feel like we're so inadequate, you know, it's really not about, not about us, you know. And I, and I, when I open that bathroom door, I walk out there and I just saw their like innocent face looking at me like, you know, Mom, are you okay? I'm like, did you cry? <laughs> yeah, I just they they so they understand. You know, it's just like that interaction. It's like the father opened his arm to us and say, "Hey, you know what? I have given these kids to you uh, under your management, and you gotta trust me because I am the one mm -hmm. that gave them to you. You mm -hmm. know, so you have to trust me and guide them through this." Yeah. So for that moment on, I realized that. It's not about me. You know, it's not about what I can do, what I'm capable to do. It's about what God can do and what grace that like, he has, you know, showered upon me and that my children can see it. And then they, yeah, they're like, they're like, Abby, they will want to pray for me. <laughs> it's like, yes, pray for me because mommy is very weak right now. You know, I'm so weak. That I, just, I cannot do anything. I cannot even think. So they will pray for me. So those moments are very sweet. And I just feel like, again, God used those opportunities these to shape us you know, to mm -hmm. humble us mm -hmm. so that we can be stronger for his purpose you know so yeah thank you for sharing that i just like yes the homeschooling day Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what to say <laughs> i miss it but yeah not really but it's, it's <laughs> <good experience. laughs> yeah. is that our kids know that we're not perfect but we yeah. think that we need to try to be perfect mm. for them um I think they pretty much can see that. <laughs> I think 
you know, actually, I have found that the more I can admit my imperfection, right, to my kids and to God, that actually exemplifies the gospel in the home. And they can see that there is repentance, that there's forgiveness, and they can ask for forgiveness. As long as we try to be the perfect mom or hold it back and, 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 and not confess and not deal with it, it actually, um, you know, does not exemplify the gospel. It just exemplifies the works, you know, put it by God. Uh, and, uh, but confessing and forgiveness with one another is the gospel center. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Meryl, what do you struggle? Do you struggle with mom guilt? Um. Yeah, I mean, like because I work, I'm not always there for my kids, like physically. So I think sometimes when like I do have days off, um, yeah, like I have limits, like I'm so tired, you know, and my days off are like the days that I have to run errands and, you know, mm -hmm. catch up with things in the home as well as spend time with my kids. So sometimes when I reach yeah. that physical uh, limit, I think I'll, I'll feel guilty, like, man, like, how come I don't have enough energy to do this mm -hmm. and that? And then I'll just try and like power through it and then by the end of the day I'm just like so spent you know um I think when you guys were sharing like the verse you know like second Corinthians 12 9 just kept popping in my head mm -hmm. like when when um Paul says like my grace is sufficient for you for my powers made perfect in your weakness and you know like in that verse Paul's talking about how like he had like a thorn in his flesh to prevent him from boasting and um because of that weakness like he had to rely on christ and christ's grace was sufficient i feel like that's very like that's like the perfect verse for like mom guilt you know like I think we have these um weaknesses and we have these limitations because yeah like if we didn't have limitations like we would be god you know but god gives us these limitations to remind us that yeah you, you're not gonna be able to be everything mm -hmm. and it's okay because that's where um my grace is gonna work and that is where i'm yeah. going to teach your kids about who i am mm. and yeah like i think just that picture of admitting that we are weak to our children and having our children, you know, teaching our children like, hey, you know, you need to pray for mommy and daddy. Like you need to. Yeah, pray. yeah that's just a perfect picture of the gospel to them. You know, um, even like I feel like it's a good image for like their own faith to know that, hey, mm -hmm. you know, when I am weak and when I stumble, like I can yeah. trust Jesus, you know, that's mm -hmm. what my parents believe in and that's what they want me to know. Uh, first and foremost in my life and so I think mm -hmm. mom guilt is natural because you know like you said we want to we sacrifice so much for our kids and we want to think oh because I sacrificed this way my kid is turned out a-okay you know yeah but the reality is that yeah we're just stewards you know and God mm -hmm. doesn't ask us to be perfect and we just want to steward the best that we can and really it's up to what God wants to do with our kids, whether or not we are, we like the results. Sometimes we have to really just, you know, surrender to God, um, knowing that, yeah, regardless of what I do, God, it's ultimately you're their father mm -hmm. and you love them more than we can ever love them. And you are more than sufficient, way more sufficient than I can ever be, even if I were to be perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah and i think that god has entrusted them to us knowing that we're sinners you mm -hmm. know god wasn't looking for the perfect parent mm -hmm. i think part of the guilt and the is good for us too when we recognize our weakness because when our kids do turn out well i take no credit mm -hmm. yeah you know, some people would say oh your kids turned out well you know what i said it's it's despite despite in spite of me, yeah. <laughs> because I know my own weaknesses. I've confessed that so many times to God. Mm. And so when they turn out well, or whatever they turn out to be, that it's not me. And mm. I cannot, that God just like takes away that pride. Mm. You know how like when your, your child comes out with a straight 
a report card or something. He's like, yeah, you know, my kids are so smart. And you kind of take pride in that. Um, that pride doesn't belong to us. It's all for oh. God because we yeah. know that it wasn't because, you know, like Alice, it wasn't because you were patient. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's all God to God's glory when we recognize oh, our weakness oh, and, and admit it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that the whole um, mom guilt also reveals where we have find value. Like, for example, I think that, you know, with younger moms, like moms of babies and toddlers, the ones who are trying to introduce food, <laughs> I know that this is a, a humongous, like, everyone wants to protect their kids from, you know, those grams of sugar. <laughs> And I remember the first time life started getting really difficult and I would take shortcuts. Like we would go to McDonald's and I was so happy every time we would get them something <laughs> from McDonald's. And I was afraid of being judged of buying junk food. And I had to like lay my pride down and say, you know, it was a hard day and I'm not going to slave over a healthy meal for my kids because they're going to live through this happy meal. <laughs> like, <laughs> The happy meal upon happy meal and I think like something as small as like feeding them revealed like the fear I had that like well what if I don't give them the best um diet every mm. single time like is that gonna be okay can I like relieve myself from that because I want to take it an easier an easier like meal time right and I think like in this way it's revealing to me like I can't even make feeding my kids an idol um, because if I do, I'm going to slave over it. And if I'm tired and I can't give them that homemade, healthy, healthier meal that, you know, it just, there's like a trade-off. So I think that for me, I've had to learn how to give myself grace when, you know, it's been a long day or we were at church the whole day and we just wanted to give them something that was easy on us. And sometimes it's just letting them eat whatever they want now that they're older. And we stop counting and looking at the stuff they're putting in their mouths. As long as they don't complain that they're hungry, I think we're, we, we're good. <laughs> you know, when you were sharing that, something, just this image popped in my mind. I feel like because there's social media, um, this whole like mom guilt and mom pride thing is really strong because it's true. You, you can easily boast about, hey, look what I made for my kid. Mm -hmm. Look at this DIY thing. Look at this genius idea. Look at this awesome meal from scratch, whatever it is, right? Um, but I feel like the things that are really worth boasting about are not transferable through social media, like the brokenness mm -hmm. you have before your kid. Yeah. Or, you know, that moment where you're just confessing your sin to your kid and saying, hey, you know, I need Jesus. This is why I want you to know Jesus. Those are not moments that are ever going to be captured on social media where you can post and say, hey, look at what I did, you know. And I think that's really humbling or it's something worth thinking about for me because I feel like it's so mm -hmm. easy for me to just go on Instagram and be like, okay, I need to find like something, you know, useful for Haley to do, you know, like I can't just... Yeah, you know? and I'm like, how does this mom do this? Like, I can't do this. I'm not creative like that. And I start feeling yeah. that guilt sometimes. Mm. Like, man, I am so not, a, I, I'm not a teacher. I don't, I don't have these natural and I'm not creative. Um, but I think that's not what God wants yeah. to be there for our kids. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. at the end of our lives, we would much rather say, yeah, like I pointed my kids to Jesus instead of saying, yes look at all these DIY crafts I did for my children, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, when you're sharing, Leslie, I think God was just reminding me of that. Like mm -hmm. many things that we can teach our children that have eternal value that we can, yeah. all, we will never be able to like post about in front of our friends or get accolades or have other moms say that, oh man, she's doing such a good job. You know? But God sees it and that should be yeah. more mm -hmm. than enough for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I totally agree, Meryl, because, um, you know, my kids are older now, you know, and I think that when they were small, like Haley or Abby, Eva's age, you know, I have always, I had, I had all these dreams for them, right? <laughs> and I had all these dreams for them, not God, you know, so, <laughs> and, 
<laughs> and as, as they were growing, I mean, you can see that, you know, like you're saying, you know, like, oh, how come, we, so we talked about earlier, I'll come here. How come my kids are not like other people's kids? How come mm. they can do this but not my kids? But then I, I'm, I and then was reminded that my kids are different from other people's kids because God's made them different. And then I need to look um, into the positives and like their strength, right? And develop their strength and then uh, work, on, work on their uh, weaknesses and mm -hmm. uh, such as pride or um, their arrogance and, uh, you know, and, and, and also like bad temperament, you know, like, you know, and mm -hmm. things like that. And sometimes I, I will ask Ray, how come they such a, have such a bad temper? And I realized that because they learned from me because I have a bad temper sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it's just how amazing how God will have that reflection, you know, remind mm -hmm. me that, oh, for my kids that well, you know, they, they're with you like 24 seven. So they learn this from you. So, if you, you know, that really helped me to, um, you know, really walk, try to walk straight away with God, you know, mm -hmm. and like you said earlier, Mary, like how the importance that how we help to instill the love for Jesus in our children's heart, mm -hmm. you know, as Andy Katie always talk about shepherd our children's hearts. And that's where it comes from, not about behavior of modification, not about mm -hmm. what they can, you know, show outside our work, but it's what the heart really matters. And so I think that, again, character building, you know, uh, faith building and uh, tell them, hey, you know, what? when you're afraid, let's pray, let's trust mm. in the Lord because God's, God's word says, you know, when I'm afraid, I can trust God, you know. Mm -hmm. So I just see like, oh, those uh, wonderful things, like, you know, like the traits that we can pass on to our children. Those are just the beautiful things that God wants us to give it to them as a gift, as a spiritual heritage that, they, mm. that we can give to them, you know, as a as a gift for the rest of their lives. So I think, again, you know, um, mom guilt, as we said earlier, is truly rooted in our pride. And I think that, again, God used motherhood really to prune us and equip us and make us more, you know, more like Jesus, you know, in the way. So I, I, I do see that and I treasure that. It's this journey as a mother, you know, so I look forward to just, again, you know, spending more time with my kids, with my boys no and um you know really grateful for this opportunity yeah. yeah i've given some of you um a 31 day prayer guide for your children i think leslie you yeah remember that and i like that i, I found it on the internet i don't take uh, credit for making it up uh, but it uh, a daily prayer for your kids but it's praying mm -hmm. for the character yeah. kindness love mm -hmm. you know uh, it, it, there's scripture that goes with it and a lot of times we pray for good health or, you know, their grades or school or friends, which are all good too, but we- Or, or future pray. spouse, sorry. Future spouse. That <laughs> future spouse. <laughs> Remember that for your, <laughs> your voice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We get so pra uh, thinking about, you know, practical daily, don't, you know, if they have a fever, you worry about them and you pray for mm. healing and which is also appropriate. But don't forget also the yeah. praying for them to grow in character. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that is probably, yeah. if I did anything right, that was, the prayer was like the, the mm -hmm. thing that got me through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, well, I'm just going to close this episode. And just to highlight that motherhood is not just right. hard work, it's also heart work in our own hearts um, we interact with our kids in our home it's known as the place of the trenches it's a humble place it shows us our need for God's um, grace mm -hmm. and for more Christ-likeness in our own character as well it shows our inadequacy um, because none of us have what it takes but God will equip us because he's called us to do this job um, we have freedom to admit that we are flawed and we need his help and sometimes we need tangible help from other people um, so mm -hmm. don't be afraid or to feel guilty if you reach a point where you you need help um, and I think in the home, it's a place where we need God's word and we need to be in constant prayer because mm -hmm. that, that is why God brought us to this place. It's to show us how to live in that constant fellowship with him and reliance and focus on his word. And that is how we can best, I think, shepherd our children's hearts. If, mm -hmm. if we are connected to 
Jesus, the true vine, and this spiritual work is going to take faith and we have no control of the results whatsoever. We can only entrust them to um, their Heavenly Father who is perfect. So thanks for discussing this topic today. Um, we'll probably have more episodes in the future about motherhood. There's so much to talk about, but we'll just end for now. Thanks again. Thank you.